If you're behind in the standings and need to make a move to help your fantasy baseball team, well, I'm going to give you a trio of former all-stars that you might be able to buy low right now. I'm also going to talk about a potential league winner who is having his healthiest season so far, but I think you should sell him. First off is a guy who is a perennial all-star. I mean, set and forget. There's no doubt that you know what you're getting with Nolan Arenado at third base. Right? He's going to put up elite numbers across the board, except this year. Fantasy managers who drafted him definitely are confused and frustrated. Even St. Louis Cardinals fans, probably a little upset, as polite as they are. This team is struggling, especially, well, actually they're struggling on both sides of the ball. But, you know, the offense is just not fully clicking. They were great the first couple of weeks of the season. And now, other than Goldie, it's all gone downhill. And Aronado is one of the main culprits. Right now, slashing 233, 285, 336. Compare that to last year's slash line of 293, 358, 533. It's not just the averages that are down. He's only had three home runs. He's really, really struggling. He's still in the cleanup spot, but that might change. I mean, this team has got to do something, right? Now, with Arnado, what is the deal? Is there a hidden injury? It doesn't seem like it. Maybe he's just pressing because this team overall is having a hard time producing runs, and as a veteran, as the guy who's supposed to be the linchpin of this offense, at least one of them, maybe he feels like he has to make up for it, and that does happen. You know, guys just try too hard, things get out of whack. So there's really nothing to point to to suggest that there's a specific reason why he should be struggling, which is why I'm gonna buy low on him, because there is no reason for this. It could just be bad timing early in the year. It could be what I just said, just a mental thing. But either way, you've gotta think he's gonna figure it out because this guy is just a year removed from having one of his best seasons and has nothing to do with not being in Colorado. He's been in St. Louis long enough. So we've seen what he can do. I think Arnado is definitely somebody you should go and fish for. Now my panic player videos that just came out a couple days ago, talk about a couple of Phillies. Well, let me add one more to the mix here, but this is different because this is someone I think that instead of worrying about whether you should hold him or not, buy low if you can on Kyle Schwarber. Now the obvious difference between Schwarber and guys like Brandon Marsh or Bryson Stott is we know what we're getting. Been there, done that. He's been in the league several years with elite power numbers. You really know already what you're in for, and that is a terrible batting average, right? A batting average, well, I don't think we even need to mention it, although it's pretty exceptionally terrible right now. What this is, is he's just slumping early in the season and it just makes it look a lot worse but by the end of the season it'll be the same old Schwarbs. he's got eight homers on the year so far and his average exit velocity is still elite in the 80th percentile right now he's hitting the ball hard it's leaving the yard it's just he happened to go hit loose in four straight games had a really bad stretch that dropped his average and now he's just hitting only 159 in the month of may so far but really this is the same guy his blade discipline is the same as usual not great he's gonna strike out a lot but you knew that going into the season he's gonna still hit 30 plus bombs he's gonna drive in a bunch of runs he'll be fine so if anybody's worried because the Phillies are in a rut or because he's sinking your average again you should have known that coming in when you drafted him but this could be a good time to get him before he gets hot because you know that if anybody can go on a massive hot streak and hit home runs in bunches it is Schwarber. Now you might not think that you could buy low on a guy who's a reigning rookie of the year in the National League, I'm talking of course about Michael Harris of the Braves, but you never know because a lot of people that recency bias gets the best of them. And by that I mean the fact that he didn't play basically all of April because he was hurt, started the year on the injured list. Since he's been back, 51 at bats, small sample, but not doing too great, hitting 219, just one home run, four RBIs. You know the issue is expectations. When you see a guy perform so quickly, jumping into the majors like he did last year, and a lot of people thought would be maybe even an MVP candidate this year, taking that big step forward, you know, matching pace with a guy like Julio Rodriguez, whatever. You know what? People expect this, and then they get this immediately. They're dissatisfied. They're ready to do something about it. Take advantage of that disgruntled owner. Buy low because this is probably the lowest his value will be based on the fact that his season totals are almost nothing. He is hitting the ball hard, 57.5% hard hit rate, and he has stealing bases, and that's important. The power will come, the base hits will fall in. So if there is an opportunity in your league to get Harris in exchange for a guy who is an outfielder number two, I would rather take Harris than a guy like Luis Robert, who looks like he might never quite fill 
his potential. Or someone like Cody Bellinger, who having a great bounce back year, but I'm not quite sure that he'll keep it up all year. Or someone like the last player I'm gonna mention later in the video. All right, that's three up. Now let's go three down. Guys who I think have peaked, or at the very least you should be selling right now when their value is at its peak. So let's go back to Atlanta and talk about Bryce Elder. He's been lights out so far. In seven starts this season, he's allowed no runs four times. He's got a minuscule 1.74 ERA and a 1.11 whip. One tiny problem. He is vastly outperforming every expected measure that Sackass could possibly measure. His expected ERA is 4.31, which is not just far higher, but that's the second biggest discrepancy between actual ERA and expected ERA among all pitchers with at least 50 balls in play. If you extend that minimum requirement to anything above 50, then he's number one. Now he is an extreme ground ball pitcher, which helps. You know, Atlanta glad to have Orlando Arcia back in there at defense. They've got a pretty good defense, so you know he could still get by, but he's getting hit pretty hard and he's gotten some pretty good luck at 268 BABIP. There's going to be some point where he gets hit hard and the balls do start to fall in and his ERA starts to blow up. Not really a guy who gets a ton of strikeouts, doesn't generate a lot of whiffs either, and so he can't fall back on that if he does start to get in trouble. This is a classic sell high, and if you remember Graham Ashcraft started out the season similar fashion and then got hit hard his last outing, don't wait until it's too late for Elder. Sell him now before that happens. Then I was waiting on this one, wanted to see if it was legit, wanted to see how long this hot bat would carry on, but with James Outman of the Dodgers, I think it's finally time to let go. Now don't get me wrong, I like Outman, I think he could be solid, he could give you some punch all year in the power department, but we've seen, I think the best he has to offer in an extended period of time, it just so happened it was in April. He's right now one of the top ranked batters still in baseball for fantasy, Hitting 281, slugging 578, eight home runs, four steals, 23 RBIs, 26 runs scored. He's helping you everywhere. But besides the fact that he's starting to cool off a little bit, you also have to look at the fact that he strikes out a ton, got a 33% K rate, and that is something that he's carried on throughout the minors. He will swing and miss a bit, and that's the type of profile that could lead to extended slumps. So like when he's on, he's on, and he's been on, but when he's off, we could see something, well, kind of like, remember what I talked about Kyle Schwarber? Outman is in a good situation. I mean, he'll still help you for the most part with your counting stats, but if someone is perceiving him as like a potential all-star this year, that's when you try to get something significant in return for him. All right, now I'm gonna tell you why you should sell Byron Buxton before it's too late. Hasn't missed time, hasn't hit the injured list yet. That in alone is, besides borderline miraculous, something that would, inspire hope in everybody who drafted Buxton because that's what we've been waiting for, right? If he can just stay healthy for most of a season, we could see MVP type numbers. Well, here's the funny thing. He's been healthy, but he's not really playing that great. He's hitting 220. He does have a few jacks, but he's also not helping you what you thought he would for a guy who's so fast and so athletic, he's not stealing bases. You may not realize this, but that really isn't his thing anymore anyways. And when you think of Buxton, you think of the power, but also the speed. Well, he only has two steals this year. He's only attempted two steals this year. Last year, even though, yeah, he did miss significant time, still in 91 games, he only stole six bases. I mean, besides the makeup of this Twins lineup and you know their philosophy on stealing bases, I think also they realize that maybe to keep him healthy and preserve his body, not have him run quite as much, and only pick his spots when he needs to. So we're not looking at a 20 plus steal candidate anymore, right? We're looking at a guy, maybe we'll hope for double digits. And then the batting average, like I said, it's bad and his XBA supports it because he actually should be doing worse. He's in the 12th percentile, hitting the ball hard, but also striking out a ton. I mean, he's almost morphing into more of a slugger, going for the long ball and that's it. Look, if that's what you're getting from him, like fine, at least you could be getting great source of power but you're not getting much elsewhere. Is this really what you're expecting from Byron Buxton? So I think the fact that he is healthy and people still have that perception of him as a potential megastar, I think, first of all, get out from under him before he does get hurt. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's probably gonna happen. And then also, you know you're not getting help in all those other categories. 
I say go ahead and trade him for a guy who does have that potential. If you missed that video where I talked about players who got off to great starts that are cooling down, check it out right here. I tell you, should you worry or not?